All right, how's it going, everybody? I came across this quote from the wounded healer and felt compelled to share it with you all. I feel like it is just so poignant for youth ministry, parents, uh, anybody that's got a young person in their life, and young people. This might sound a little harsh at times, but Nowen is speaking into the culture of youth and and it's from 1972 but you tell me if this doesn't ring true for today but this fearful generation which rejects its fathers and quite often rejects the legitimacy of every person or institution that claims authority is facing a new danger becoming captive to itself. That's an interesting way of putting it, but he he goes on, he breaks this down. Uh, As adult authority disintegrates, the young are more and more captives of each other. When adult control disappears, the young's control of each other intensifies. And now I want you to start thinking of social media. Instead of fathers, The peers become the standard, and many young people who are completely unimpressed by the demands, expectations, and complaints of the big bosses of the adult world show a scrupulous sensitivity to what their peers feel, think, and say about them, right? Being considered an outcast or a dropout by adults does not worry them, but being excommunicated by the small circle of friends to which they want to belong can be unbearable, can be an unbearable experience. And this is cancel culture. This is interaction on social media. It has become very, very easy to excommunicate, to use Nowen's word, or to cancel someone in today's culture. And and just the social pressure that young people are on. Now, some of this, I think, is a little bit dated into the 1970s. Um, You know, you can kind of see that. But uh, because I do think that a lot of young people put a lot of demands and expectations on themselves, particularly when it comes to college and success, later on in life, but let's continue with now and because he's better. <laughs> this, can, this excommunication can be an unbearable experience. Many young people may even become enslaved by the tyranny of their peers while appearing indifferent, casual, and even dirty to their elders. Their indifference is often carefully calculated, their callousness studied in the mirror, And their dirty appearance is based on a detailed imitation of their friends. Yeah, I mean, again, social media playing the part of this and becoming enslaved by the tyranny of their peers. The influence that young people have on each other through social media I would say is even far more powerful than the influence that young people had on each other in the 70s and the with the hippie movement and things like that. It's far more dynamic, fast moving and intense when you bring social media into this problem. All right, so but does now and have solutions for us? I think maybe. But the tyranny of the fathers is not the same as the tyranny of one's peers. Peters, that's not right. Not following fathers is quite different from not living up to the expectations of one's peers. The first means disobedience. The second, nonconformity. The first creates guilt feelings. The second, feelings of shame. In this respect, there's an obvious shift from a guilt culture to a shame culture. The shift has very deep consequences. For if youth no longer aspire to become adult and take the place of their fathers, and if the main motivation is conformity 
to the peer group, we might witness the death of a future-oriented culture or, to use a theological term, the end of an eschatology. That was bold and I think very poignant to our culture today. This idea that we are raising young people to fear nonconformity within their peer group. And if people influence that peer group, then you can really create, um, I don't want to say like mass formation psychosis because that's like not what I'm talking about, but like this, this one, this like consciousness in the mind of a young person that to do this is wrong and to do that is right. Uh, but it's but it's been divorced from the actual virtues that something like scripture would teach us. It's just your fear nonconformity. You see what's going on online, and then one must conform. And that's a scary place to be. Parents, young people, the scripture will help you navigate this. And so let's continue. I think now, now and has some great insight here. So the end of an eschatology, then we no longer witness any desire when we no longer witness any desire to leave the safe place and to travel to the Father's house, which has many rooms. There's your Bible reference. Any hope to reach the promised land or to see him who is waiting for his prodigal sonny, son, any ambition to sit at the right hand, the right or the left side of the heavenly throne. This is what we've been talking about. The last few videos that we've done on this channel are about the heavenly kingdom and God's, like, like the, a worldview based on the idea that my citizenship is in heaven and how that helps me navigate this life. Then staying home, keeping in line, being with your little group becomes important. But that is also an absolute vo vote for the status quo. And then we have a, a bit of a solution, I think, here from now on. And please read this. It's it's right here. I have a little picture of the book here. This is the the version that I have. It's uh, copyright 1972. Uh, Henry Nowen. I forget who published it. Um, but here we go. So so in this context, pastoral conversation is not merely a skillful use of con uh, conversational techniques to manipulate people into the kingdom of God, but a deep human encounter in which a man is willing to put his own fears in doubt. I, sorry, I'm writing this wrong. His own fears and doubt, his own hope and despair, his own light and darkness at the disposal of others who want to find a way through their confusion and touch the solid core of life. Uh, youth pastors, are you willing to do that? Churches, are you willing to do that for young people? Parents, mentors, people volunteering, are you willing to do that? The, this context of pastoral conversation is not merely a skillful use of conversational techniques to manipulate people. That is not the church. That is not how we present the gospel. I know that, that sometimes the church has a bad rap for being um, fake and hypocritical and stuff like that. And we need to own that, but we need to change that by being genuine people. But a deep human encounter in which a man is willing to put his fears, his doubt, his hopes, his despair, his own light and darkness at the disposal of another person to help them find a way through their confusion. And that is a huge part of this because I think oftentimes we are trying to prevent or alleviate confusion or pain in the life of a young person. And I get that, right? Because we don't, we don't want, want young people to hurt. But rather than trying to escape it and find a way over it, find a way around it, find a way under it, any way to avoid it, we need to go through it. And we need to walk through it with young people, the people we're mentoring in our lives. We have to go through it so that then we can lead others through it. But we need to be willing to put our fears and our doubts, 
our hopes at the disposal of another person so that they can use it and see that there's a way through to touch the solid core of life and that sense of needing something solid that anchors us is so prevalent in the life of young people today. Would you agree? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, something to ground me, something to anchor me, something that to help me navigate this world. So I, like I said, I just felt compelled to share this with everyone. I know I'm just sitting here reading a quote from Henry, Henry Nouwen, but pick up this book and read this thing. And um, yeah, I hope that this can be an encouragement. I hope this little excerpt and uh, little discussion can just be an encouragement that, yeah, we're facing some intense challenges, but man, do we have the answer in the person of Jesus like a real encounter with the person of Jesus this that like anchors us to the solid core of life, like now I'm saying, to touch it, right? Something that we, like, it's real. It's real. It's not some religious idea. So I don't want to get on to any sort of uh, <laughs> uh, soapbox here. So there's now in, read this book. Um, man, yeah, and again, I just wanted to share this because I felt like I needed to to share this with uh, the youth ministry community out there. And to my students, I hope that this is encouragement. And uh, to parents and leaders as well, I hope you can take this uh, as an encouragement to what the answer is out there. So uh, thanks for being a part of this community, and I look forward to being with you in the next one.